Okay, guys, welcome. I've, yeah, yeah. Welcome. I've just gone through a level two trimix instructor class with um, with Achim Schlaffel. Achim is the founder of Inner Space Explorers, and after a long uh, time in technical diving, he showed me uh, a new way of uh, handling stages and deco bottles, deco cylinders. Uh, yeah, could you tell me a bit more about all this? Well, obviously, we need a, a third stage um, when it comes to deeper, deeper stuff. Uh, the two diving in ISE is uh, involving three stages. And the third stage, obviously, is the bottom stage. So um, the oxygen and the Nitrox 50 now have a third bottle coming in. So the oxygen moves to the back and the um, bottom stage comes in. And uh, it moves to the back because we don't want the third bottle in front. I mean, clicking it to the left side would make it quite bulky. I mean, thinking of three A's, yeah. for example. And also becomes quite hard to, to manipulate. Mm -hmm. Thir uh, second side, obviously, uh, red si right side is not a um, solution because we don't have a D-ring here. We have the light canister, we have the primary and everything clipped to the right side. So we don't want that. Um, so yeah, we said to the back and therefore we need the leash. Okay, so how many uh, cylinders can we put on, on the leash? Um, we did dives with three or four on the leash, yeah. but uh, on, on the level we talk now, it's usually one or maximum yeah, two. Yeah, one day oxygen, no? And what's the, talking about this level two uh, class, uh, what's the, the, the depth, of the targeting depth of the, the course, kind of? Well, the, 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 the gases involved is 1845 and 1560, yeah. so uh, around about 80 meters. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, um, we use the leash on the, on the course, and I've done that before already. But uh, it was a bit different than what I, what I was used to, and uh, could you show... Uh, so, the leash, leash? Yeah. yeah. Well, the concept of the leash is obviously nothing ISE came up with. Um, it was invented a uh, um, long time ago when, when people started to transport uh, stages into caves for, uh, for decompression depots and stuff like that. And obviously, uh, they, they realized it's no option to click six, seven, eight stages to their own harness yeah. and, and swim around with. So they just made a ring out of, uh, or a loop out of uh, rope, kicked them in there and then tried to pull it that way. And um, this is how they came up with it. And at some point they took a double ender, clicked it in it and then um, attached it to the harness. And uh, a lot of people still use it like that today. I don't like the double ender for various reasons. First of all, it has two failure points, so it can disconnect from the D-ring and it dis can disconnect from the rope and then you lose more than one gas, which uh, in the DRR philosophy we always plan for one failure at a time, so losing more than one gas is not a good idea. Um, I also saw lines twisting, especially more stages scootering, um, and the line actually twisting broke the gate of the, um, the double ender which is also not nice, so the double ender went. And today we use a bolt snap um, with a fixed leash in between. Yeah. And we also came up with kind of a concept of how to build a leash. Roughly, it's a rule of thumb, it's not on the centimeter, but just to give you a general idea, the handle, which is an intermediate pressure hose, um, is as wide as your hand, and the general leash is the length of your hand. Um, yeah. So, again, it's, it's a rule of thumb. Um, it's, it's, it's nice because um, a 150 guy probably has smaller hands than a 2 meter yeah. person so it will also adapt a little bit to your body size and we realized over the years it works quite well so um, it has a cross knot in here with a little bit of tackling to make it nice and uh, prevent it from opening I don't like tie wraps on it, they're sharp, they break um, and this is just a bit more maritime yeah. so to speak, so really nice Okay, so also um, use the Bigger bolt snaps. Yeah. For to, uh, if you use dry gloves, in my case, many times here we don't need uh, dry gloves, but I still teach many times uh, not using dry gloves because people come and they use dry, dry gloves. Uh, and it's nice to put your finger through. Another thing we've been uh, looking at, at the in the course was the, the position of the bolt snap on, on the D ring. Right. On, on, the, on the D ring on the hip. Yeah. Well, the hip D ring is. Um, it's like third party. I mean, most people focus on the D-rings here, and this has yeah. to be right size, and the centimeter up and down, and stuff like that. But this one goes somewhere. So the rule of thumb is it should be in the middle, plus two, two fingers to the back. Yeah. 
Um, if it's too far in the front, the leash doesn't sit anymore and the tanks go loose. So um, you have the SPG on top, then the first stage, the second stage, and then underneath you have the leash. Click in here and then the leash stretches out between your, your butt and um, your thigh and goes um, to the middle of your legs where the tank then sits. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so um, something about the rigging also on the course uh, is a bit different than what, I, what I'm used to. Uh, interesting approach. All right, we have a um, 40 cubic feet here, rigged for 50% nitrox, and um, stage rigging kit should be nice and clean in front of the valve opening. Yeah. Um, on this one, the, the tail here is a little bit too short. It should be also like um, the width of your hand, which is not the case here. No idea why. Um, because this allows um, the stage to move and uh, adjust itself to get streamlined. If you have this really short, you actually force the bottle in a certain position and it breaks water when you're swimming. Uh, even worse when you're scootering and it yeah. makes the, the, the handling of the stage uh, a little bit more uncomfortable. So this could be a little bit longer here. But still reasonable. Um, so when you look at the marking, I see a lot of people putting the markings like 21 meter up here, which I think is not a good idea. On the inside, you can, nobody can read it anyway because your body's blocking it. Yeah. And here outside, if I'm swimming, I have my arm over yeah. it. If a second stage is laying on top of it, you cannot read it either. So if it's on the, on the bottom of the stage, it's actually easy to read, even if there's something on top because the stage will never be parallel. It will more be yeah. like this. And also the other side is, uh, is readable if it sticks out on, um, on the other side. So that's a much nicer way. And this marking is for your partner. Yeah. I mean, you ask, um, I switch gas, watch me. So he's looking, is this the correct bottle? So my marking that I check is on top. So this is 12, 3, 6, 9 o'clock position. Because this is what I, what I do. I check my depth gauge, okay, 21 meters. Uh, that's my 21 meter bottle. Here's my my analyzation sticker, so that's the right guess. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that makes, uh, makes sense. Um, yeah, also another thing about the cylinders, which I've been, you know, especially if you use a bit more cylinders, is that you really want to have a tank uh, knob on this side, tank valve on this side. Yeah. Um, because, uh, because of obvious reasons, you, know, you want to have the right side free. Exactly, so everything that goes on, on the yeah. left hand, so I want to be able to manip uh, manipulate it like that and not... Yeah. Uh, because I've seen you know people using side mount cylinders, have right side, uh, left side yeah. tank valves, and then you end up with. The, uh, well, let's, let, let's let's put a, a regulator on it, so it becomes a little bit more obvious. We obviously use swivel first stages, and um, uh, SPG on a short hose, bent backwards here and attached, uh, so it's in a protected uh, position. It's not in front. Everything as compact as possible, and. Um, so this is one meter hose. That's a one meter hose, and um, I'll show you something about the position of the second stage because that's something I also see a lot of times. Um, people tend to have the second stages up here, and now obviously that creates an issue with bolt snap, and yeah. also when you have more stages, it becomes quite bulky up here, which we don't want. So I teach that the uh, second stage should be roughly in the middle of the tank. So first of all, it gives me a lot of room up here. To work with the double, uh, to work with the bolt snap. Yes. Yeah. Uh, even with thick gloves, it can go through here. It's a one-inch bolt snap, and if I have the tank in position, the regulator is protected under my armpit. Even if I go through restriction, if I have more stages, um, it's in a protected area and it doesn't interfere with anything else. Yeah. Okay. That seems to uh, seem to work fine. Uh, yeah. For me, that was also a bit new. This was below the. Uh, yeah, true. Because if it's up, actually, you have the loop sticking out here. Yeah. Um, especially if you use the MyFlex hoses, which tend to be a little bit stiff. Um, so you want this nice and clean and yeah. easy. Okay, so tell me something about the procedure. So, um, yeah, because for me it's, it was new. And um, it was very interesting to see uh, this new approach to, to, uh, to handling the stages and deco cylinders. And there's a couple of things I think were really interesting. Especially uh, regarding uh, uh, team awareness, uh, moving the cylinders. As you will see, I'll explain right now is that the cylinders will never ever, two cylinders will never end up in front of you. Okay. Exactly. I mean, as I said before, the, one of the principles of the DR concept is, or DR, minded uh, mind diving, whatever you want to call it, 
is that we plan for one failure at a time. Uh, I mean, everything in this concept is based on that. Otherwise, we would have backup for backup and stuff like that, which we don't want. No. So obviously, we have to come up with a procedure that um, does not give a chance to lose two cylinders at a time. And this means we cannot manipulate more than one cylinder at a time. So basically, we don't want to manipulate them as much as we can. So first of all, the oxygen goes on the leash and goes back. So it's out of the way. Um, it's if we lose it, or if I have a choice, what I want to lose, I would always lose my oxygen because it's the most shallow gas. It's easiest to compensate. Slow tissues. I mean, you know all the stories. Yeah. Um, so that's the less important gas of all of them. So now in front we have the 50% of the bottom stage. So I see a lot of people that dive the bottom stage on the inside into 50 outside, which I don't like. Simple reason, I don't want to, uh, to breathe from the cylinder on the inside. First of all, it's hard to reach, yeah. it's, uh, the partner cannot really see it, and if I want to take it out afterwards, it's also a pain in the butt. So the 50% goes inside, the bottom stage goes on top. Bottom stage is easy visible now. It's naturally the one that I access if I, if I uh, reach for it. If I'm done with it, I take it off, put it in a nose clip, maybe I let it go, uh, different story, but um, anyway it's gone. So if I put it in nose clip, it's buoyant now, I put it in the center of gravity, it doesn't influence my, uh, my trim, my body position. Uh, I do not put it on the leash because it will lift the leash, which then makes it really uncomfortable. And it's banging around, um, and I also don't want to leave it here because it prevents access to the inner stage, so it's off. So like bullets in, in a pistol, the next one's coming up automatically because yeah. now as the bottom stage is gone, my 50 is in place. And your oxygen is still the oxygen is still there. There's yeah. no chance I switch to oxygen accidentally, which is still one of the killers in technical diving, breathing the wrong gas at the wrong depth. So my 50 is already there, it's easy for my partner to identify when I ask him, like, you watch me changing gas, this is the right one, it's only one bottle there. Yeah. So I switch to it, I don't have to move it somewhere. Moving up in the water column, doing my decompression, I come to 9 meters. At 9 meters, the, re the last 3 minutes of my 9 meter stop, I spent cleaning up. So the first thing is I switch back to back gas which means my PO2 drops, which is yeah. good because afterwards I switch to, to so oxygen, so I have a high PO2. don't want to go into details about decompression now, but these three minutes are valuable time for me. And the good thing is I clean up, so when I move to six meters, I can immediately switch to oxygen. You're right? So what I do is I switch to back gas, I bring the stage in front, um, I store the hose, I unclip it, and I kick my leash off, which means my, leg move, uh, my, my left leg makes a movement and the leash is falling down. So yeah. now, looking down, I have visual control of it, I can see it, I do not have to take it off. I clip my 50% in the leash, I take my oxygen. Taking the oxygen means my finger goes through here and if I grab it like there's no way I'm going to lose it. So I have it in the right position, I bring it to the front, I clip it in, yeah. so it's secure now. I get the leash with the 50 back between my legs, I clip the oxygen in front, and I'm done. So now I can move up to 6 meters, and guess what, there's only one stage in front, easy to identify, no chance I take the wrong gas, because the only option is behind my legs, behind my back, out of the way. So I switch to oxygen, I'm done. Yeah, well that works quite fine. Uh, it's nice and clean, especially if you use that for, for the first time. Uh, it's easier for me. It was the first time, like you said. You know, you don't have this bottle here, uh, which is hard to reach. Um, and with a little bit of practice, it comes quite easy. I was a bit uh, reluctant in the beginning to the uh, clipping uh, of the uh, the bottom stage nose clip, but that worked really fine. You just grab a book, book up there. It's out of the way. It doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, there's always an option to, to to throw it. I mean, a lot of people ask me about that, but um, I personally. I'm not the biggest fan of it in nose clip. Yeah. So, I mean, most of the time you have to do this because yeah. there's no other option. But if it's exploration diving, you have a good surface team, um, there is always an option to shoot the bottom. Yeah. So um, if you do really deep stuff and we have to do it in open circuit for whatever reason, and you have more than one bottom stage, you just shoot 
I just let it go. In fact, the people are like, oh, why, how? Well, if you're at 100 plus meters, I mean, time really goes fast. So you have only very limited time to explore the wreck or whatever you want to do there. So I don't want to spend, I mean, let's say 20 minutes total bottom time. I don't want to spend four minutes of that dealing with probably three or four bottom stages yeah. that are empty and then going back and storing hoses. And all. So the only thing I do is I switch to back, to, to back gas, I unclip it, I unclip it, I let it go. It goes up. So if the boat crew is aware of that, there are spotters coming up, they pick him up, it works quite nice. So then you have nothing? Yeah, there's, there's no procedure, it just yeah. takes a few seconds and that takes the next one, partner has to watch anyway. So the, the other solution is if you want to spend a little bit more time and if you're like, hoo hoo, my push spot or whatever, yeah. I mean, you can always take an, uh, an alert marker and clip it to it, inflate it a little bit, let it go, which yeah. is still fast, but it's more visible on the surface. Yeah. Right. I don't want to go, to go too much into detail because this is basically above level two. Yeah. But a lot of people ask about this throwing away bottom stages, which can be done, but there's, you need a really good surface crew, a really good briefing, and you have to accept the fact that you, in fact, you can lose it. Yeah. I mean, if you spend a couple of thousand euros on gases and traveling, whatever, I mean, if you lose a stage, you lose a stage. That's part of, uh, part of it, yeah. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you for a great course. Uh, You're welcome. We've uh, seen many new things and uh, things that work quite well, um, but we still have some things to do, um, but uh, all by all, uh, I'm a big fan of this, uh, this new uh, system, uh, stage handling uh, system. Thank you guys, and then uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Mike. Bye. I did like the end, I did, because you're talking a bit about, you know, oh, shooting ball. Because, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, may maybe we can use... Um, How do you stop this?